Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves, he's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody else, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow this head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. 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 Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the contact section, and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. If you want more shows on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, become a member today. There you can get access to member episodes every Thursday, the Tuesday shows ad free, and you get also the overtime sections when they're available right there on the website and the new, the new minted, the Confessionals member appy. That's right. The Confessionals has an app. It is available on your app store, whether it's Apple or Google. And their members can log into their account and get all the goodies, plus access to a chat community that people are digging. Phil, you're in studio here. Did you get a chance to check out the app? Absolutely. That's right. I've downloaded. I'm using it. I've. I like. But I like about it the most, if you don't mind. I like the um, how it, it's sectioned off by what uh, like paranormal, uh, cryptid, and all. Like yeah. so, you can basically her- you know choose whatever topic you want to like look at or discuss yeah. or post in. And then post it, and I so I've been posting in the paranormal one, talking to people, listening to people's stories. So I think it's a great idea, great community, great app. I love it. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. I, I wasn't sure if I had you do a beta test or not, and I think I did. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we got Phil Anderson here in studio, so we'll get to him in a second. Let's just get through the business real quick. That was random and unprofessional, but it's okay. It's my show. I can do what I want. Anyways, if you want to go ahead and check out the app, you got to be a member. But if you're a member and you haven't checked out the app, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, download it, and get involved in the community on the app, plus listening to all the member episodes right there. Also, friends, if you are interested and you want to protect your vehicle from EMP blasts, solar flares, or a rare lightning strike to your vehicle that will render it, render it inoperable, you definitely want to check out EMPShield.com. Go to EMPShield.com. You can get the device connected to your vehicle. I did it myself. And though I used to work on cars, I can tell you, anybody who hasn't worked on cars can still do this. It's really easy. You can connect it yourself and it will protect your vehicle from that hit. Go to EMPShield.com. Use coupon code TONY and get yourself $50 off every device you order. So if you have multiple cars, get it for all of them. Protect your vehicles in case the world ends. You can still drive around and watch all the things burn. All right, friends. This week we have Phil Anderson in studio. Phil, what's going on, man? Not much, man. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's an, just an incredible opportunity for me to share some of my paranormal experiences in the last year from my YouTube channel that I've been doing. Actually, a little over a year now, but yeah, yeah, man, I'm excited to get into it. We got a lot to talk about, dude. Like we got a lot to talk about, and this is so fun because. Uh, you and I went to college together. Yeah. And uh, you were on episode 50. You're in the intro. Dude, it slithered or Heath slithered over to me. That's you. <laughs> yep, and nice. uh, 
I, I listen. I love the fact that I live somewhere now where I can say, "Hey, why don't you come on vacation down here and then hop in the studio?" <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> and that's and, what I did. Yeah, that's exactly. And this place is, uh, you know, Tennessee is incredible. Absolutely. I've never been here before, so my my first time here. The mountains. I mean, I've been to New Hampshire, Maine, where I've seen mountains and stuff, but the mountains down here are absolutely yeah. stunning. And I'm it, the beauty here is unbelievable. I love it. Uh, you picked a great spot to like put have your headquarters at. Because yeah. this is an incredible state, so man, I love it here. Uh, and you know, we—I was telling you when you first came in that everywhere I go around here, I see the Smokies. Yeah, and it's yeah. just been—it's been an incredible transition. But one nice thing is that a lot of people go on vacation to Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and other places here in Tennessee, obviously. But Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg—I mean, it's—it's it's an hour from my studio, so it's easy to say, "Hey, bring your family on vacation, take a good vacation, enjoy yourself, and then spend," uh, you know few hours with me in the studio and get some stuff done you know yeah that's right dude it was it was absolutely perfect yeah because i brought you know nicole my fiance with me and mm -hmm. she you know so we're enjoying pigeon forge and gatlinburg and you know it's it's great and i'm going to be filming a couple videos as well nice um the afk discussions guys i'm gonna be doing a couple of videos with them um so that's going to be cool so it's like mutually beneficial yeah. it's like get the youtube stuff and some fun at the same time. I mean, it's the perfect combination yeah. of those two things. So. It, it's the it, that's the hustle, man. That's the hustle. Like that's the kind of mindset I had whenever I was starting everything. Like everything I did, I was like, how can I make content out mm -hmm. of it? You know, uh, I got to tell people before we get into our discussions. Now, first of all, uh, you started a, a YouTube channel. Uh, what did you say about a year ago? Yeah, a little over a year ago. Yeah, and and give people a, a rundown as to what it's all about. So my YouTube channel, I would say it's different than what it started. I basically started doing Randonautica videos, mm -hmm. essentially, because at the time, Randonautica was very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of YouTube videos out there that were kind of like... Uh, Exaggerated? Exaggerating. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so what is really going on? Is this app evil? Is this, Does this app take you to evil spots? You know, is there something paranormal going on with it? Yeah. So that was kind of my initial interest. And obviously, I have interest in the paranormal ghosts and exploring and as far as abandoned buildings and stuff. So I kind of had that mindset, mostly the random Nautica to start. But as time went on, I basically kind of got rid of, well, not got rid of, start, I started to move away from random Nautica and more so into a paranormal investigator primarily. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, doing ghost hunting and going into different areas that are um, allegedly haunted, primarily Bridgewater Triangle, which has an incredible amount of history and tons of paranormal hotspots yeah. to check out. So Basically, that's pretty much what my YouTube channel is now. I do weekly videos. Every single week, I go somewhere different. It's in the Bridgewater Triangle. Either I'm an exploring abandoned house or I'm checking out an old battlefield or Huckamuck Swamp, Freetown State Forest. You name it. That's yeah. pretty much what I do. That's the, and, and it's really cool. I mean, um, I, I've been watching you grow over the last year and posting your stuff. And you're very consistent. You're giving people a lot of content. And it, the only reason why that's possible is because you enjoy it. And mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad to see you having fun. Uh, I got to tell people, and I've talked about this uh, throughout the years over time, when, especially when I'm on other people's shows and like, how did the show start? And, and you know, how did you build a show? All that stuff, right? Well, uh, I'll tell the audience, you play a big role in this show's success. And it's because uh, when I first started the podcast, uh, somehow you and I had gotten reconnected in the beginning. And I was aware, I found out, or maybe maybe I knew you had a podcast and I asked for pointers or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I'll never forget this because it was such a target mark for me. You said, if you can make it eight episodes, you're, you're cooking, you're good. And back then I was like, eight episodes, that is a challenge. Like I was like, I don't know if I can do this two weeks, let alone eight weeks straight. And, you know, I had this, you know, this idea that I was going to be on a schedule and I was going to be consistent. I'm never going to miss a week kind of thing. And if I do, I, if I missed one week, I probably would have quit because I was like, OK, well, you know, this isn't working. You know, yeah, I, it's I too can't. much for me. I can't do it. You know? Right. Yeah. Or or somebody like I don't have enough people to talk to. You know, I'm not going to sit here and just talk. I need somebody to talk to, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, I remember creeping up on eight weeks and I hit that eight week mark and I felt like a, a champ. I was like. I freaking did it. Yeah. You know, because I mean? like when I first started, I mean, you were the veteran podcaster. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, Phil said, if I could do eight weeks, I'm cooking. And uh, I made it eight weeks. And I was like, well, all right, let's see if I can do that again. So I did another eight weeks yeah. and another eight weeks. And eventually it was a year. And it was just so cool because, uh, you know, somebody that I met in college my freshman year had such a key, key role 
in the psychological aspects of starting a podcast for me that led to where we're at now. I mean, literally, uh, I probably wouldn't be in Tennessee right now if it wasn't for podcasting because I still yeah. be in truck driving in Philadelphia, hating my life, being severely depressed. People don't understand how depressed I was driving truck. I mean, I enjoyed driving, but uh, it was being alone all the time, uh, being away from my family, missing birthdays. Like I was severely depressed. And every week I would turn on the microphone like, welcome to the show, everybody. I'm yeah. so happy. And then I turn it off. I'm like, I hate myself. <laughs> you know, like I'm dying inside. <laughs> I would be calling my wife at work crying because I'm just like, I, I fell off the truck again. My back is broken again. Yeah, Can yeah. I quit my job? And she's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I hate my life. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk and say thank you for your inspirations early on because it was a huge factor for this show's success. And so, uh, thank you. You're welcome, man. At, at, at any time, honestly, you know, it's it's so weird to think back. Yeah, because back then I was doing the Phil and Alex show back then and I had been doing it for like two or three years. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think it was one of our mutual friends. I think it was Todd or something. Was had told Todd, okay. you were asked you yeah. were talking to him about starting a podcast or something, and then he had mentioned to you, "Oh, Phil does a podcast. Ask him." I got you, and I think that's how that makes sense. Yeah, I remember seeing his Instagram following, and I remember talking to him like, "How did you get such a big Instagram following?" Because right. I, I right. wanted, I was trying to build up my social medias and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think he said he was blogging for Mashable or something like that. Yeah, at the time, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah, he was he was kind of like in that clout game for a little while back in those days. Yeah, the, or, you know, mid, I guess, two thousand ten. 14, yeah. 15, something like that. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, dude, time flies too. Yeah. I can't believe it's been this long since you've been going and going strong. And It's crazy. No, you've built literally an empire here. So... Well, it's uh, it's a little kingdom, yeah, and and we're trying we're trying to expand like the Roman Empire. That's right. So, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. We're working on it. Okay, uh, I'm not trying to be as ruthless as the Roman Empire, but uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely trying to expand and grow. And I think that the spot that I'm at uh, is a good spot because we have Nashville three hours west. And that's a huge mecca for country music, music, even now film and with the Daily Wire there, all that stuff, the films that they're doing. Uh, but then there's Atlanta and that's about two, three hours away. And that's a huge uh, mecca for music sure. and, and industry, uh, shooting films, things like that. So why not make it the, uh, the entertainment triangle, you know, and put, it, put some you know, heat it. on Knoxville. So we're going to become the uh, YouTube slash podcaster haven. And uh, it's going to be a bunch of weirdos walking the streets, filming dog man everywhere. Yeah. It's going to be great. You know, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, that's all, awesome. All of a sudden the people in Knoxville, they're going to be like, we never heard of this dog man thing until this Merkel media showed up. And now everybody's <laughs> seen dog man everywhere. It's like, a, it's the Merkel Dude, media effect. That's right. Just wait 10 years. You know, I remember 10 years ago, how people used to make fun of people like you that, that used to go off to Sasquatch and yeah. talk about it. Something yeah. like that. Now you go into any shop, there's like the Sasquatch stickers. There's everywhere. the one where he's got like the, the tooth, you know, yeah. like, yeah, you know what I mean? Devil ten horns. Years, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, like 10 years from now, there'll be dog man things everywhere now. You know, yeah. it'll be the same way. Yeah. It'll be like, everyone will be talking about it. And be more accepted and stuff like that. It's it's funny. So. Ever since I've come out with the uh, the film Expedition Dogman, uh, I'm becoming more and more somebody that people are coming to about their Dogman stuff. But gotcha. it's not like a ton. It's not like every week I'm getting tons of Dogman stuff. Uh, but it's becoming more common, way more than it used to be. And uh, it, it's it's one of those things where you know I'm not complaining about it at all. I like it. I, I like the topic. Uh, but I'm noticing that the not just dogman, but in general, the aura around what I'm doing seems to be heading towards, uh, like almost like a dogman cryptids, the woo woo, where it's yeah. like they're more than just physical. Mm. And you know, it's like I saw a dogman walk out a portal. You're on the show. Right, like, let's right. yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, because uh, I and I think it's because of my personal interest. I, I noticed that the show and the episodes go in a direction uh, whenever I'm hot about something. And because of the information that I've been receiving over the last couple of years and the things that I really feel like I'm becoming uh, a knower on as much as much less of a I thinker about it, you know, it's like, I'm pretty sure I know this is true. Yeah. Uh, when that happens, I get really invested in topics. And so when things come across the desk, I'm like, get that person on mm -hmm. now, you yeah, know, definitely. So no, and you're doing some great work with the dog man stuff. Like I said, the documentary was huge. You know, as far as getting that out there, like I said, I think I think it's one of those things that people don't 
it's not as popular as some or not as well known as some of the other ones mm -hmm. you know yeah so i think it's definitely interesting and important to get it out there because you know it's it's obviously happening because there's people that have experiences yeah you know, so it's wild stuff man mm -hmm. but um let's uh let's start migrating into uh the stuff that you're here about the conversation uh at hand is your uh, would you call yourself an investigator yeah i would i would call myself a paranormal investigator okay yeah uh i i wasn't sure what to categorize you as because i i, I look at you as like a utility tool uh because i i think that you're more than capable of handling uh, an urban exploration mm. and i feel like you you're somebody that would be really cool to uh watch grow because i think uh you're exploring a lot of different avenues and i think there's a huge potential and an empty void really for people who are just going out, putting themselves in environments and being aware of the paranormal in those environments. Mm. You know, like uh, you go to an abandoned building, you know, and, and you bring like, like, like for instance, in Pennsylvania, I had done a exploration video on the abandoned uh, uh, industrial complex yep. in Pottstown, PA. Yep. And uh, you know, a lot of people go in there to do urban exploration and explore empty buildings. And it's like, oh, that's cool for, for whatever. But uh, what if you up it and you're like, let's explore empty buildings and also see if they're haunted. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, yeah. Do you know what you're right? And sometimes, Tony, the paranormal finds you. Because I believe it. it. It's funny you mentioned this because literally, uh, probably it was Christmas time. So it was Christmas time. I had some time off. I was like, I want to get back into some more abandoned buildings. I've been doing a lot of paranormal videos. So I just wanted a break from doing paranormal videos. Number one, because it just takes a long time to edit them mm. rather than like an ex exploration video where it's just visual. Yep. And it's simple cuts, maybe some music. There's not a lot of editing that goes into it, yeah. you know, but whereas paranormal videos, there's a lot more editing. I got to listen to audio recordings. I got to you know, listen to the spirit box over and over again to make sure I got all the words that are pop. You know, there's just yeah. a lot more work that goes into it. So I go, I check out this abandoned house. A, a viewer of mine's like, hey, I know where this place is. It's kind of like near your area. Let's, you know, go check it. You can go check it out. I was like, okay, cool. I'll just do a, a, an explore mm -hmm. abandoned building. I've been wanting to do one. No paranormal. I'm just going to go in there, do my thing, film. And so I do the video and I get towards the end of the video. And, um, as, as I'm editing the video, I get home, I edit the video and I'm like going through stuff. And there's this one part where I'm, I'm done exploring. I'm kind of just taking like artistic shots to kind of put to music as an outro intro kind of thing. So I'm going around the house, just taking different videos and stuff. Um, so I take a video and I'm editing it at home and all of a sudden I hear like a voice on there and I'm like, no way. <laughs> and so literally I'm, I, I'm filming, I walk, I shut off the camera, I walk three feet, I bend down, turn it on again. And then that's immediately when I get the voice. Wow. And it's a man, man's voice, just saying something good, literally something good. That's all. That's he what said. he said. Yep. Something good. Yep. And wow. so it sounded like it was the back half of a sentence. Like he was saying something else and I just caught the end of it. Um, and so when that happened, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, I didn't want to go here to do this, you know, and here, here there's, and so as I'm, I start, do you understand how much more work I have to do <laughs> that's now? Not, I was like, I didn't <laughs> want to do this. You know what I mean? Here it is just like, yeah. and so then I, I'm going to the footage more. And so I get into the basement area and then we look over at this bench. I'm like, oh, this looks like a little workbench, yeah. a, a raspy, deep, gargly voice says to me, I'm assuming me, I see you really in the basement. Yeah. And I was like, you got to wow. be kidding me. So, of course, as I'm editing this, I'm like, well, now I have to go back. Yeah. Because I've got to do an actual full investigation and like see what else we can catch there. Yeah. So we go back. We catch a couple more EVPs. Some of them you just can't quite hear. They're just, just far enough away. Just far enough away. Another thing that's weird about this house, EMFs everywhere. There's no power in this house. I was like, how is, I don't know how that's possible. You know, like there's just no, there's no, this is an abandoned house. There's nothing in it. There's. Yeah. There's no power here. I I know there's no power in the house. So that was weird. And not only that, I go back into the basement. We get two d more EVPs down there. Another one that's kind of similar to the other one, that mm. raspy voice. And it was just kind of like a deep exhale. That's all. Wow. And then we were looking in, there. it's a very old, very old home. So it was like fireplace heated. Yeah. So there was like fireplaces, almost like three of them in the basement that kind of heated the whole home. So in one of the fireplaces on the ground, there's like this pieces of metal and I'm like looking at him like, what is that? EVP, boom, this little kid, a little kid says to me, 
it's lead. Like pieces really? of lead. Did yeah. you say it out loud? Yeah. Um. They. I didn't hear it. But like. No. No. Did, EVP. Did yes. You, did you say? Mm -hmm. it? Wow. Yeah. And it responded. It responded to my question. Yeah. Wow. I was like, oh, what is this? And I was like, it's lead. Wow. Yeah. Like a little yeah kid. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same place as the. Mm -hmm. Wow. Same place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's like multiple spirits. There's yeah. at least three probably because yeah. there's a raspy voice one. There's the little kid, and then there's a guy upstairs. Or at least I mean, there's probably more there, but. Wow. Uh, before we get too much further, we talked about your YouTube channel, but what, tell people what it's called. We didn't do that. Oh, sure. Um, Canadian Dutch Boy Studios. Yeah. For those who you don't feel that don't know out there, that's the name of the channel. So if you search it on YouTube, you can find me. Um, but I also go by Exploring with Phil on my social media. So mm -hmm. um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So if they go on YouTube and type in Exploring with Phil, they'll find you? They should be able to find okay, me, yeah. Cool. I've, been th I've been thinking about changing the name of my YouTube channel, Exploring with Phil. Probably it's kind of like <laughs> with you with Merkel Media. It's like yeah. Katie and Dutch Boys is like my Merkel Media. Yeah. So it's like, what do I do? Do I, you know, I'm I know. in a, I know. It's a tough spot. I think about the same thing. I'm, only, I'm on the reverse of it. So mm -hmm. like, I'm thinking to myself, do I change the YouTube channel from the confessionals to Merkel Media so right. it houses everything or do I start a separate channel for all this different stuff? Right. And it's like, it, it really just depends on how much extra work do we want to do mm. because doing more channels means that we got to put more energy into trying to grow those channels and then utilizing our current uh, platform with the most followers to redirect them at times. And it's just, it, it can be logistically a pain in the butt. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, at, I'm in the same spot with that. Hey, what you're talking about, though, with the um, with with accidentally getting EVPs, uh, I, I've mentioned this a couple of times on the show, but it, it just it, it's worth repeating because it happens, I think, a lot more to us than what we realize. And if you just have the patience to go back and listen to recordings or just maybe even be aware in the moments, you never know what you're going to catch. Uh, I went to I, I was directed to a location in Pennsylvania uh, Jack, th th try to find. I forget the name of the uh, place I went to. Um, it, it, actually, you know what? Don't 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 look up the name of the place because I'm not done there yet. And so when, once I'm done with the place, I'll, I'll release the name of the place I, I went to. Um, but I um, I actually I went to this place in Pennsylvania because I was directed that there somewhere in in the Reading, Pennsylvania area, and it turns out it wasn't that close to Reading. Hmm. Um, there was a location that was marked with a very large rock that looked like a serpent. And uh, there was supposed to be some underground reptilian civilization there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so I, I found a place that had a place that, that looked like it was um, the head of a snake. Mm -hmm. And it was huge. I'm talking like megalithic huge. Wow, that big. It was huge, dude. I mean... At parts of this wall was over a hundred feet, hmm. and uh, it, it stretched over a half a mile before it went into the ground. And so I'm pretty sure it stretches further. Yeah. Uh, and there's some scientific explanations for the formation. Obviously, there's always scientific explanations. Um, but then there's the, woo, let's <laughs> let's get juicy with the yeah, explanation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, long story short, we had a lot of weird things happen that day. I still got to make it into a film. I have the footage. I just haven't made it into a, uh, any kind of YouTube video because I hate doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that night I had stopped, uh, cause we got buzzed by some military helicopters. Hmm. And, uh, when we kept going, I said to my, the guy who was filming Ed, uh, I said, are you ready to go? And he said, yeah. And he's a strong Costa Rican accent. And then, uh, on audio, we hear a whisper. sounds like a female just go, okay. And it was so clear. Yeah. Like I was sitting there going over the video footage in my studio in Pennsylvania. And my dad was sitting there cause he was over recording for Hammerlane legends. And, um, he uh he he got jaw dropped. Like I looked at him. I was like, "Did you hear that?" He's like, "Yeah, I heard that." And I was like, "Dang, man!" And what's crazy is that later on that night, I thought I heard a little girl talking in the dark. Oh, geez. and I was like, but Ed didn't hear it. He was sitting right next to me, so I was like, right. "Ah," and we were tap tired. Yeah, right. And I was like, "Ah, it's probably nothing. I'm not gonna go over." I was out there for 14 hours. Yeah, I was like I just want to go you're home just now. At that point, sorry, little girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you're staying out here. <laughs> yeah. it's either, you're either my imagination or something I probably don't want to see. So yeah, I'm out. Right. <laughs> what are you really? <laughs> yeah, are you like one of those reptilian little girls? Yeah, right. You know, I mean, I'm out here looking for you, but I'm tabbed. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> come find me. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, mm. yeah, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> so you're you're doing these exploration videos, and they're happening. A lot of them are outside. Yeah, and so you're like, which is interesting because we just talked about my experience with it happening outside. And a lot of times, people think 
that traditionally, for whatever reason, our minds go haunting building, haunting inside, haunting looking through a window, doorway, corner of a room, you know, mm-hmm. hearing a bump downstairs or upstairs. Uh, not a lot of people, when they start talking about hauntings, talk about outside. And uh, that's what you're primarily doing right now. Yeah, pretty much. And I will say I, there, you're just about, uh, about to get an EVP just as easy as outside as inside. Daytime is night. Like, I don't think there's any difference at all between daytime and night. I've done night investigations. Like, just for example, at the Huckamuck, I've done both day and night there. Mm-hmm. And I catch just as much evidence during the day and as night. So, And as far as EVPs go, I catch just as many EVPs just talking or walking around than actually being like, okay, here we go. We're going to start an EVP session. This is EVP session number one. You know, yeah. So sometimes it you have to get outside of the box. And be like, okay, well, so, you know, because sometimes you can just do kind of what everyone else does and everyone else says, okay, we have to do an EVP session. We have to close the EVP. You know, you don't really necessarily have to do that. You just walk around, do your thing. And sometimes even just you saying something or whatever, they'll respond to you because, they, you know, or if you're in a place where there's a certain amount of history of whatever that story is, if you talk about that story or something that maybe will trigger them to say something, you know, that can help too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you go to Huckamuck Swamp, swamp uh, knowing that there was crazy stuff happening or did you just kind of be like, oh, it's a swamp. Let's go check it out. Um, yeah, so that place is well known. It's a part of the Bridgewater Triangle. For anyone who doesn't know what the Bridgewater Triangle is, it's a um, huge, huge triangulation area in Mass- southeastern Massachusetts that contains about five to six towns. And it's not an exact science. Obviously, there's paranormal things that happen outside of the triangle, but it seems to be an area where there's a large concentration of paranormal things happening. Mm. And it's it's weird because it's not just like, oh, it's not just ghosts. It's ghosts. It's cryptids. It's UFOs. It's Pukwudgies, which are this little um, mythical creature. I don't think they're mythical. I think they're real. Didn't you see one in the, in the first episode you were on? What, I, what I, is it that you saw? Was it a Oh, my, my, my uncle saw a Pukwudgie. Yeah. Yes. I've never seen one personally. But my uncle saw one. Yeah. Like, you know, they're basically like anywhere from a two to four foot tall creature, completely covered in hair. Um, they can appear and disappear. They have the ability to like disappear. Um, they're known as tricksters. Depending on the Native American culture you're talking about, some of them, there's good ones and bad ones. Other ones, they're just bad. So it's kind of a confusing thing. You don't really, I don't really know if they're some that are good, if some that are bad, or if they're just all bad. Mm. But they like to play tricks on people. Um, sometimes they can lead you to your doom, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, they know they've known to like children, which I think is kind of weird. I don't know why or for what purpose. Um, I think I've definitely caught a couple Pukwudgie EVPs for sure. Really? Yep. And a couple spear box responses where I've asked about Pukwudgies and they responded. One of one time they just you know I asked if anyone was there in the Huckamuck and they're like Pukwudgies. What? Yeah. Yeah, in the spirit box, which wow. I, they, I highly doubt a radio station is going to say the word puck puck wedgie. Wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> So like, it's, you know, yeah. it's, 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 you're like, whoa, that's pretty verifiable. And not only that, I've gotten the word bank when asking about them, I've gotten the word bank and spirit box response little, which is another word for them, like a little person, uh-huh. little, um, they're known, they're basically in Native American culture, they're known as different names throughout different, depending what tribe you're talking about. So in New England, they're called Pukwudgies, basically a troll-like creature. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, these things are wild, absolutely wild. And they're all over southeastern Massachusetts, without a doubt, for sure. So, all right, on the top, and we're going to bounce around here, but I mean, you brought we brought Pukwudgie. What is your thought on this? Because uh, you you mentioned how it's a creature, mm. but it is it disappears. Yeah. So, I mean, you look in these topics, you go out investigating, uh, what is your vibe as to how you view this stuff as far as like, and, and and it could be what we're talking about might be different, but like when it comes to the puck wedgie, do you think it's a little physical creature running around or do you think it's more of an entity running around or, or how do you view it? I think it's, I think it's kind of like Bigfoot in a way because it, it's, it's yeah, both because mm-hmm. it seems like physical because you can see it, mm-hmm. but then there's other moments where it literally disappears in front of your eyes and, and they leave physical evidences. Too. Correct. Right. Yep. And not only that, this go, the puck wedgie stuff goes back a long time. Kind of like with Sasquatch with Native American culture, it kind of goes back a long time. Mm-hmm. Same thing with puck wedgies. Um, there's a quick little story I know about puck wedgies and um, the Wampanoags. Like the only one story I could find that's like a positive story about puck wedgies, which I think is interesting. So basically what happened, allegedly, is a puck wedgie came to a Native American Indian. It's like, please, my wife is hurt. She's injured. And so he brings him 
to this to this place and it looks like a totally different place than what he's used to kind of like a magical place or something mm -hmm. i don't know if they went through a portal something love it yep so he you know heals or fixes up the the you know woman pukwudgie or whatever and the pukwudgie thanks him and that was that's the story wow. um but that's the only good story i could find there's not a lot of good stories usually it's like you know they lead you to your death or something, you know, or something like that. So that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, there's terrible. not a lot of good about them. I mean, like, it's like, I think if it's a giant creature, it's terrifying. Mm. If it's a little creature, it's terrifying. What we need is just human sized creatures and maybe it won't be so terrifying. <laughs> something that just looks like a human yeah. and you, would, you can't even tell that it's like, anything. What's else. up, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With your beard and stuff, maybe you're the creature. Yeah, that I'm right. About. To, yeah, to them, probably. They're like, oh, who's this? Yeah. What is this? This guy, let's check him out. You know, <laughs> he might be one of us, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So, uh, Pakwaji's in Hakamak Swamp. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what Muck Swamp, Freetown State Forest, everywhere, like anywhere in southeastern Massachusetts, generally. So what what what's what have you been uncovering in Huckamuck? <sighs> Man, there's so much. I mean, obviously, countless Class A EVPs. Mm -hmm. um, one time, I'll tell you about one time specifically because it was just weird. So I'm walking down the path. I get that like creepy feeling, you know, like I'm being watched or something like that. You know, just anyone that's ever done any sort of paranormal investigation or searching for Bigfoot and you just, if you've ever had that feeling, you know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. that feeling. So I'm just like, why am I feeling this? You know, so I, I start going down, um, walking down. I mentioned it on camera that I'm like, oh, I kind of feel creeped out. And, I, and the next section of like pathway that I walk, I catch an EVP that says two words, Phil, here. Like meaning like, I would assume meaning stop. Like I'm here. Like I'm right in this spot right here, which is, you know, and it sounded like the puck wudgie voice that I caught like over a year ago in that same area. So I'll tell you about that too. So I was with my little cousin. He's a kid, you know, 12, 13 years old, which I'm, is interesting because Pukwudgies allegedly like children or they, I don't know, they see children out. I don't know if they steal them, want them. I don't know why, but they like children. So we're in the Huckamuck Swamp and this is, I didn't even film it. We were just, I just brought him out there because he was interested in it because I was doing videos about it. He's like, I want to go out there. I was like, all right, we'll go out there. We'll just do a couple quick EVP sessions. It's January. It's 20 degrees out. It's freezing. Mm. We're out there for maybe half an hour. We do a couple EVP sessions. We get to this one area where I've gotten many different things since then. And so we're sitting there, standing there, and he looks at me and he's like, I hear whispering. And so I didn't hear the whispering at the moment, but he hears whispering. And so we listen, I listen to it back. There's whispering there. And not only that, after the whispering, you can, um, you can hear what sounds like that same voice that says, Phil, here. It says, here again. It's like, just wow. like that, you know, it's like next to him or like next to us, like right there. And so he heard the whispering and I caught the EVP of the here as well afterwards. Wow. Yeah. All right, when you're going out there, does it seem, first of all, you said F Phil here is what you heard. Mm -hmm. So you, what you thought, what, what your logical conclusion was, is not what I was thinking. Oh, I, what were you thinking? I was thinking like something talking and saying Phil is here because you go there so often oh, yep. that it's almost like talking to others and it's like Phil's here. Yeah. Phil here. Oh, that's even creepier because they know, I mean, they know my name. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> 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 Clearly. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, shoot, I forget where I was going to go with that other thing though. Uh, you mentioned about uh, hearing the, the hear, the whisper. It's gone now. This escaped to me. Yeah. It, this, yeah. There's so much about the, Oh, Huckamuck so, Swamp. so yeah, the Huckamuck Swamp, when you go out there, do you feel like, like how often are you catching EVPs when you go out there? Is it every time or is it a as lot far of these EVPs? I would say on average, it probably averages out to once a, one, a, one a video, wow. probably something what? like that. That's a treasure trove. Oh my God. This place is unbelievable. I've caught another EVP where I, I can't verify that, like who these people are that are talking, but. I think it was two Native American women. Really? Yeah. So I'm walking down the path and um, the first woman or first voice, I should say, it sounds like a woman, says, um, what a man or what a man. I'm not sure if they mean like, what is that a man or what a man like, oh, wow, look at that guy. What I don't, a man, what a man, what <laughs> yeah, a man. Yeah, what yeah a maybe that's her favorite man. song. I don't know. <laughs> so they, the first one says that and the other one says, yeah, he's cold or cool. Mm. I, don't, I can't. Tell I'm which telling one. you, man, they were trying to sing that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And actually the weirdest, weirdest moment I've ever had in the Huckamuck. Yeah. The, the EVPs are strange and stuff like that, but 
the weirdest, weirdest experience. It was about a 25 minute experience. And really? so in the area where I caught the here and the two women, that's this general area. I'm standing there about to do an EVP session. I hear what sounds like a large, like bang, and then a tree fall. Right. And I'm like, what was that? Listen back on the EVP. You hear the thud, but you also, I also catch an EVP with the thud. Mm. So it's a, it sounds like, like a, hmm, hmm, like someone hitting a tree or that's what it sounded like. You're like, wow. like a voice, like kind of like in, you know, doing something or like physical. Um, and then the tree falls. And so I, I, obviously I didn't hear the, the EVP at the time, but I heard the tree fall. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. So I kind of go walking a little bit closer and basically to describe this area, it's, it's a trail. There's a power station above and then there's like some thickets and then the swamps behind it. And so in the swamp area, I'm standing there kind of like just listening because I heard that thud and the crash of the tree. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. So I can't remember if I asked if there was anyone in the woods or whatever in the swamp. I get a knock in a tree probably 50 feet um, to my, like in front of me to my right, like a large knock on a tree, you know, something that hit a tree. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. Then I hear what sounds like glass moving and metal moving around, mm. you know, about 30 feet in front of me. And so where I'm at, I mean, it's, it's probably a few months ago. So it, there's no foliage. There's nothing in front of me that's like blocking my view. Like I, I can kind of see probably about 10, 20 feet in. And this, these noises are coming like 50 feet. Some are closer. Some are like 30 feet. The metal noises. Metal noises and the glass moving, which is weird because it's a swamp. Like, where is this glass coming from? It's water. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very strange. So I'm hearing all these noises. And then, um, you know, I keep on getting like closer and closer because I'm just like, what is going on? Like, there's something moving around in there, or moving some moving objects around in there, but I can't see anything. And so um, a couple more noises happen. And then I go down around the pathway, kind of near where I got those two EVPs of the two women. And I'm standing there. And um, I hear another loud, sh a, a large thud and uh, um, what sounds like a beeping noise. So it's like a thud and it's like beep, beep, like that. And I was like, Wh what? So uh, the only thing, I, uh, logically, I'm like, okay, maybe, just maybe a drone fell in there and someone's trying to get it out. Mm. But the, these thuds that I'm hearing are loud. It sounds like someone's taking like a baseball bat or something large and hitting against a tree that's how large that's loud and these and then not only that i'm hearing like metal crinkling metal crashing like metal bump like hitting tree like and it, like i said it's swamp there's no way yeah. there's no way there's no one in there how often do you run into people out there um maybe if i'm lucky every other time yeah there's hardly maybe some people walk it's not around. crowds no 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 never Never. I've seen, uh, on average, maybe I'll see one other person. Hard, wow. Most of the time, I don't see anybody. You know? Wow. There's a couple, like, walking trails throughout the swamp. Um, one of them's like a power line thing that they build power lines through, so they filled it in a little bit. So that's the only way you can kind of, like, walk around. And then there's a couple old roads. And the, the rest of it's just swamp. Wow. Um, yeah, the Huckamuck Swamp is probably the place I've been to the most, for sure. Mm. That's the place where I saw uh, the wolf. The wolf sighting I had. We can talk about that too. Yeah, but before we go into that, yeah, I got so much let, to talk about. Let's let's <laughs> pull it back to the metal portal doors opening. Yes, that's absolutely. what I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I thought the same thing because we were talking this about before oh the show gosh. about the guy you had on. What was the Martin place Groves? Martin Groves with the LBL. Yes. Yeah. When he said the metal crinkling thing about like the portal, whatever. Yes. He was, I've heard the same kind of stuff in the Huckamuck Swamp. Wow. Hey, same kind of stuff. Really? The metal crinkling. I've heard that multiple times, not even just that one time. Another time I was out there at night, same thing. Just, uh, it sounds like aluminum or something, just like someone crinkling and 20, 30 feet away. And I know there's no one yeah. out there. You know what I mean? We would see somebody, you know, that I, uh, very unexplainable. I and, don't know what and to And you said this happened, this happened for 25 minutes-ish? Mm-hmm. And is it the only time you ever heard the metal? Uh, I've heard the metal twice. One time at night, where it was just like a one-time thing, and then this other time where it was like a twenty-five minute, like thing, and then oh, okay. so so the, the the one time it was shorter, it was during the day or night, night, and then the long time was during, during the, day. the day. Yeah, wow, during the I day. I think I think I think Martin, his door sound was during the evening, so I think he was wor working his way back to the campsite. Interesting. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it kind of goes in with what you're talking about. How it, it, you're going day, night, getting activity. It doesn't matter, and that's mm-hmm. that's the idea. Is like for me, um, you don't need to be doing this stuff at night because it it, it they don't adhere to a certain time frame. Like yeah. I know the witching hour, three o'clock, but it's in the name, witching hour, which is mm-hmm. doing witchy things. And I mean, obviously, there's more things to it that than that, but. It's like hauntings. I mean, they don't. They're not like, oh, it's three a.m. Let's let's like, get cracking. Hold on, hold on. We, yeah, yeah, it's not time for us to haunt you, right? Because so, it's like, uh, well, the veil's <laughs> the thinnest now, so that's the only time we can do stuff. It's like, but Larry, we're already here. Sorry, yeah, we got to wait till the veil's, the veil's thinner <laughs> just to stay on schedule. You know, and, what did we uh, tell you about doing this? I told you we have a specific time. We do this. You're breaking the rules. Yeah, I'm just thinking like the, the ghosts and Casper. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just dated ourselves. That, that, yeah, no. that's okay. I, how old is that movie? That's Dude, that's got to be 94, 95. Oh no? my gosh, right? it has to be. Yeah, jeez, it's be, that's man. a long time ago. That's wild. Uh, all right, so you're hearing the metal sound during the day and that one time at night. What the one time at night was it just a quick thing? It was a quick thing. We heard it once, and then um, uh, after that, we asked if there was someone around, and we heard uh, like a metal knock, maybe like three or four power stations. Really? Down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I know that's no, there's no one out there at night. I mean, yeah. it's one of those places where, yeah, you can, you, you, it's like a wildlife place. So you can hunt and trap and stuff there. I think I've maybe seen one hunter the entire time I've been out there. You've been out there a lot. Yup. And it's one guy that was like, I've never been here before. There's people I know that are like legit hunters, um, a family I know, they won't even go there. Wow. They Why? Because of the paranormal mm-hmm. stuff? Mm-hmm. Wow. They won't even go there. And this place is rich with, a lot of different animals. There's a reason for that, right? Yes. <laughs> Nobody's hunting there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and not only that, I have I think I heard a big cat out there once. Really? Yep. I don't know. I can't. I mean, it could be a bobcat. It could be any kind of a cat. Mm-hmm. I don't know cat noises as far as what the noise they make when they like, Row. I heard one of those noises in the huckamuck. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And to make it even weirder on the one of the spirit box sessions, I asked if there was any dangerous animals around and without skipping a beat, panthers. I was like, mm, panthers, really? like black cats. Yeah, that's what wow. that's what they said. I mean, who knows that's true or not? But, but that's that's they, that's, they, that's the rumor of there that there's, yes. people are seeing black cats. That's one of the that's one of the rumors yeah. of the Bridgewater Triangle that un, animals of unusual size, mm-hmm. big dogs, big panthers, big yeah. cats, pterodactyl like creatures that come swooping down, like wild. Just you like, gotta tell me if you see a ter- oh, i like, <laughs> I do. Call me, be like, bro. <laughs> Let's go live yeah. right now. <laughs> Turn on your machine. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> like, amazing. That would be incredible. So you're, and I want to, I want to kind of tie this wolf thing into this conversation as well. But uh, just to kind of not move too far past it, uh, because I do my thinking live in the moment when I talk it out Me loud, too. right? Uh, so you're having the metal sound. Now, how long was, because you were hearing other things, but how long was this metal sound going on? Was it like just a piece of this 25 minute or was it like a consistent, like, oh, there it is again. There oh, it is again. It was that, during that, t- that 25 minutes, it was like every 30, 40 seconds or something. Really? It, it would be you some have, other noise. Is it on your YouTube yeah, video? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's on my YouTube channel. Wow. Uh, and most of them, most of the noises you can hear, especially the weirdest one, like I said, is the, the metal bang and then like the beeping noise, like a beep, beep. What is that? I don't know. What co- like I said, the only thing logically I could think maybe just maybe a drone fell in there and they're trying to get what it is- out. But I didn't hear propellers. I didn't hear a motor. I just heard banging, a bang, and a metal beep. I appreciate your your effort at logical thinking, but let's take it there. Yeah, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> uh, what if the beeping is human and it's mm. it's the um, the powers that be tapping into the uh, paranormal portal realm and they're doing things in the Huckamuck Swamp. Like, like, what, like what if the Huckamuck Swamp... Because, all right, so I talk about how uh, the... So so people talk... I talk about it sometimes, but, you know, I, I'm not totally sure. But people talk about how when we invaded Iraq, the reason why we actually invaded Iraq was to recover Nephilim DNA. Gotcha. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, it, like, we have these different stories and... and, and uh, periods of time where people refer to our government or governments of the world tapping into more paranormal type uh, uh, things and trying to uncover and unlock these things for their own nefarious means. What if there's something like that going on? The Huckamuck Swamp is so old and so legendary, this Bridgewater Triangle mm-hmm. with paranormal stuff that 
not only is the paranormal stuff happening there, but humans are now trying to tap into these realms, maybe because the the veil is thinner there, just kind of like in Joshua Tree. Sure. And so, like, what if you're, the beeping you're hearing is actually a mechanical device being used to pass in and out? I don't know. Yeah, dude, I would not be shocked in any way whatsoever. Just to give you a background about Huckabuck, the word Huckabuck means place where spirits dwell. Okay. Um, which is what the Native Americans named it. There's your sign. Yeah. <laughs> and what's weird about that is it's a swamp. So my logical thinking is like, why would there be so many people in the swamp? So I, I, I've i asked many times, hey, did you live here? Did you live near here? Always no. So I'm like, where are these ghosts coming from? It's got to be a, a portal or something that they're walking through and ending up there or something. Yeah. I don't know how or why, but it's weird. Let me, this is an idea for you. Uh, since you're up there and you're doing your thing, I mean, you're, you're gonna. I'm telling you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm like prophesying it, right? Like I'm predicting this. Uh, I believe in ten years from now, you're gonna be a go-to person for conversation on the Huckamuck Swamp and the bridge where, like, I think you're gonna be on Discovery Channel one day. I hope so. as a featured person, as, so. a, as an expert kind of thing, because of your experiences in there. Um, but uh, w- what if the you start trying to do strategic investigations out there around uh, religious holidays. Oh, good, uh, good idea. Great ha- idea. Even down to Halloween night, uh, Easter, mm-hmm. like skip church on Easter, go out there. In fact, go out, do yourself, I'm telling you, do yourself a favor, try this out. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Easter weekend. Yeah. The whole time. Just, yeah. just, just, just go out there and be there the whole time. Uh, take breaks to get food, offload cards, charge batteries, get back out there yeah. uh, and and identify certain areas that you think are the most secluded, the most eerie uh, and see what happens there. Because it'd be interesting to see. I, I just want to see what happens there. I have yeah. my own thoughts and stuff, but I would like to see. I don't want to I don't want to see the the future of this this experiment with my own contaminated yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would strongly think that there could be something s- very strong going on. Oh, no doubt. I know there is, no doubt. I just don't, I just can't put my finger exactly what that thing is. But it's, there's definitely something going on there for yeah. sure. It's, it's wild. a wild place. It's so, a wild place. You, so you're, you're, you heard this. Uh, so from the time that you heard the 25 minutes of metal sounds and the, the that was where the, the grunting was too and the tree falling yeah. over. Yep, same place. Dude, like I'm telling you right now, Either Dogman or Bigfoot came through a portal, yes. cracked a tree, yep. knocked it over, bounced. And the yeah. beeping is just like, I don't know. Yeah. They're, the, the leash, the, the collar on their neck because they're actually a, a, a cloned hybrid from right. a military base somewhere. Yeah. Just I, mystery solved. Yeah. Jack, yeah. mark it down at this time. <laughs> mystery solved. I That's saw it. the whole Huckamuck <laughs> Swamp. Okay. Like it, it's just, uh, it, it's a done deal. Um, but how far in time from that experience to the wolf experience or which, which came first? Oh man, that's got to be like very similar. So, God, which did come first? The wolf sighting first. Really? Yep. Wolf sighting first. Talk. And then a couple weeks after that, then that happened. Tell me about this. So, I, by the way, this is Massachusetts, right? Yes. There are, there is not supposed to be any wolves in Massachusetts. Yeah. How far away from a Boston are you in the Huckamuck Smoke? 30 miles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> A little close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very, yeah. Traffic, well, if there's traffic, maybe not that close. But, gotcha. You know, traffic's awful. But yeah, like 30, 35 miles probably. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. So this area was a, a new area in the Huckamuck I've never been to at the time. A guy I used to work with lives in this area. And is like, hey, I know another area where you can access the Huckamuck Swamp. And it's really creepy back there. And this is a guy that's like not a paranormal guy. You know, he's just like, hey, I, I just know it's creepy back there and et cetera. So he gave me the address, you know. I went, so I was, I, you know, start the video. I'm less, not even probably a half, not even a half a mile from my car. So I park my car, go down the trail during my video. I get this, like, it's only happened to me this one time that so far anyway, where I've gotten this feeling like, Phil, you should not be here. Literally. I heard that in my head. It was Mm. like, you shouldn't be here. And so I just ignored it. I didn't say anything. And I kept on going and then it happened again. It like it was like, again, Phil, you shouldn't be here. And so I say it, I mention it on camera. I was like, I, I don't know what it is. I just feel creeped out. Like I shouldn't be here. I keep on walking up and then I get to this point where it's just very strange. I've never seen woods like this. So it's a pathway. And then over on my left-hand side, as I'm looking over, there's just trees, all these fallen trees 
with like either with the roots uprooted, kind of like falling over with a hat, kind of as a circle mm -hmm. around the back, kind of like that. Yeah. But as far as the eye could see, just trees down. And I'm like, number one, I think this is very odd that there's so many trees. It almost looked like, like a tornado ripped through there or something. Mm. That's what it looked like. And I was just, that's kind of weird. And so I'm looking around. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll do like a spirit box session. So I shut the camera off. I get the spirit box out, pull up my antenna, I go to turn it on. I look, I literally look up and I'm probably like 40, 45 feet away over one of these trees comes jumping over the top of the back of the circle part, not just the tree, like back of the circle, jumps over the back of the circle part is this black, fluffy, dog-like creature on all fours, but, you know, jumped over the, the back of the side of the tree. And so I see it and I'm just like, immediately a fear and flight comes over me. I just literally didn't even think about filming it. I just grabbed my stuff and left. You're such a liar, bro. And Why yeah, did you film I, yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was like, it's you in that situation. I, you know how many people said that to me? I was I like, I it. know, I know. And so from now on, I don't turn my camera off anymore. I leave okay. it on all the time yeah. for that reason. Yeah. But like I said, I've seen coyotes before. I know what coyotes look like. This yeah. was not a coyote. This was a black wolf-like dog that was huge massive bigger than any other coyote i've ever seen it's huge I, I, I it shocked me i couldn't believe it and not only like that experience but i went back a few times a week or two later with some backup obviously because i wasn't going back there by myself yeah and that whole area is just emfs like you would not believe off really? the charts emfs there's no power out there there's nothing out there probably within 100 feet there's no power there Wow. So you're talking EMS just out of the blue for no reason, that wolf encounter or whatever. Dude, wow. wild. Just fluffy. I've never seen like a wolf. Like, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen a wolf in person, but in black, it was all black. Yeah, I mean, all black. I know wolves can be all black, but like, first of all, wolves aren't supposed to be where you're at. No. And no. Uh, like, when you say how, like, it was huge, how big would you say if it was standing on all four, how high do you think it'd be standing up in the air? Oh, man. Probably a little, a little bit below my waist, maybe mid thigh, mid thigh waist, I guess. It is hard. It's hard to tell because it was so far away. I mean, 45 feet away. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like it wasn't like right up on me. So, but it was, I thought it was huge. I thought it was big. It was bigger than any other coyote I've ever seen, for wow. sure. I've never seen a wolf in person to be like, okay, this is the size of a wolf. Yeah, yeah. But it was bigger than any other coyote I've ever seen. I mean, e like, even if it was a normal size wolf. Yeah. It's not supposed to be there. No. Right? It's not. And there was, it not. it's not like there was somebody else out there that had their dog running around. And this is how far uh, from the metal sounds were you? Oh, from that, probably, it's all Huck and Buck Swamp, but from that point to point, probably a mile. Really? Yeah. Because the, the Huck and Buck Swamp's like 17, almost 17,000 acres. Wow. Or something like this. Huge. It's the biggest swamp in Massachusetts. Wow. Yeah. So this, it's probably a mile. Yeah. Probably a mile away from that. Imagine how much, uh, how many dead bodies are in the Huck and Buck Swamp just from history, not yeah. just from nefariousness, not, but yeah. just like, People died there. Yeah. Native well, Americans. The, the, yeah. The Wampanoag used to bury their dead there. Really? Yes, absolutely. Wow. So that might be another thing. And another thing that's really strange, after I got the weird noises, I kind of, it kind of stopped. And so I was like, all right, let me, I just need to take a break from that area. I was like, let me get out of here for a minute. So I go down to the opposite side, get the spirit box out. And on numerous occasions, I've gotten the word bank response um, removal. So I'm like, removal, removal. So I kind of put two and two together and was like, well, let me just ask, did someone remove bodies from the swamp? And without skipping a beat, which? Which? Which. Whoa. And I've asked multiple times and they've said which multiple times. Wow. Which I don't know what reason you would move a bodies from a swamp to begin with. Maybe the witch brought the bodies to the swamp. Possibly. Moved it to the swamp. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't so, know. Creepy. That's, creepy. That is creepy. Yeah. Maybe the witch came and removed the bodies because mm -hmm. it resurrected the bodies. Yeah, I don't know. That's what that, let's, let's go that's crazy what I with thought. it. I'm like, what? <laughs> like I said, the last thing I was expecting was to wow. get that response. You yeah. know what I mean? I was thinking, oh, maybe a killer or, you know, whatever. But no, it was like witch. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like mm -hmm. if you got if you ask a question, and it's like chipmunks. Like, okay, yeah, all right, now <laughs> toothpaste. <you just laughs> go home. You're drunk. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, dude. So the Huckamuck Swamp, lots of activity. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Do you do you get excited going there still? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I love going there. Well, because I know every time I go there, something happens. Something mm -hmm. weird happens. Um, and that place is just filled with paranormal activity to the brim. I'm still hoping to see like a Bigfoot or a oh, creature yeah. or something, That'd like a awesome. physical creature, um, which I have not seen yet. I haven't Other even seen, wolf. yeah, I haven't even seen like a, a full body apparition with my own eyes. I've caught them on camera once. Really? Yeah, at Eastern State. Really? Mm -hmm. In Philly? Yeah, Philly. See, when I went there, I was so bored. Oh, really? I was bored. I was oh, like, this place sucks. sucks. Like, I was like, this sucks, man. Like, I was like, oh, you live near Eastern State. I'm like, save your money. Sucks. Oh, that stinks. So you went, you went, you didn't get anything. I, I it was like I didn't even get chills. Like really? I was like, this is lame. Yeah, that sucks. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot of good stuff there. Really? Yeah, a lot of good stuff. See, this is why I, I'm just I, I'm literally I'm not. Ugh, man, I, nothing happens to me. Yeah, that sucks. I say dude. nothing happens to me. Things happen to me, but it's just like. I feel like for me, things happen to me when they need to happen, not mm -hmm. when it's like, oh, I'm out here doing my thing. Yeah. It's like, I feel like when things happen to me, it's because they're supposed to happen to me. Gotcha. It's like marker points in my life mm -hmm. that's like, you need this experience for later on. And I think the first thing that it comes to my mind with that is when I had that experience with the guy, the warlock at his house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that, that was something that I didn't understand what was happening in the moment. I didn't connect the dots till I already started the show a year later. Uh, but it's been a building block of the show because there are certain times that people say things to you. And if you didn't have the experience that I had, you would maybe not believe them or you might question, really, are there really people out there? And it's like, no, what I experienced, like you, nobody's going to tell me otherwise. Right. And so I, that's the first time that I feel like I had an experience where I needed to have, the, I was meant to have the experience. Right. And, um, and I've had things like that happen to me before where it's like, the 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 dog man in the house thing. I always say dog man in my house and catch people's ears. I don't know if it was the dog man. Uh, all I can tell you is we we were literally focusing on dog man a lot, and then we had something heavy bipedal with nails on its feet walking through my house, uh, and and that was right around the time that I started connecting dots that dog man might be probably is more than just an upright walking monster in the woods there's more to the topic and enter portal dog man all right. that stuff yeah and so I, I i tend to have experience i feel like when i need to have them and so i don't know if that's uh god removing protection briefly to show me things you know sure uh, because that can definitely be the case i strongly believe yeah. i know god put me here mm -hmm. and so maybe when i have these experiences it's, it's god saying all right here's another piece here's another piece here's another piece but other people like you seem to have just boom 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 uh so you had this experience in eastern state and you've okay. had multiple experiences in Eastern yeah state. tell yep. me about it okay so I think the most chilling thing that happened to me when I was there, we were in one of the basement buildings. I can't remember off the top of my head which building it was. Mm -hmm. We're in a basement level. It's basically like school, where the school was, that area. So we're walking down the hallway. It's kind of point, and I don't know if anyone's ever been there. You ever been there at night when they do night investigations? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they split you up in different groups and stuff. So as the night progresses, usually what happens, I've been there twice. Usually what happens is people start to fade away as time goes on. You know, some people just do it and they go for an hour and then they kind of bail. So it's getting to the point of the night where it's like later in the night, there isn't as many people. So it was just us down this one area. So it was just my, me, my brother-in-law, Eric, and my sister, Sarah. And so we're walking down this hallway and um, we get the word bank response. I'm he or here or something like that. And I'm like, oh, are you over here? And I point like, over to my in front of me to my right and from behind me there's a voice that, in a deep dark voice that says no mm. yeah and i heard it with my own ears it's not just an evp like wow. i heard did this. you catch it on audio? oh yeah wow yeah yep and it, it it took me a second to even like register it in my brain like i i hear it and i'm like wait what i'm like did you hear that and of course my sister's like you know, freaks out oh my god what what was it you know the <laughs> yeah yeah did she hear it too um no they didn't hear it so wow. it was they were in front of me so okay. like you know so i was like on the back so it's like something that was on your shoulder behind whispering, me yeah, saying in your behind, ear, like, me. No. behind me wow yeah i got a bunch of evps there um 
Another time near the dentist office, you familiar with how um, at that facility, if a patient was aggressive or would bite people, they would give them two chances. And that second chance, if they did it again, they would rip all their teeth out. Oh, shoot. Did you, I don't know if you knew that. I don't think I knew yeah, that. It's I forget a lot awful. of things too. Oh, dude, awful. Wow. So in this dentist area, we're talking about that story. And we're basically like, oh, yeah. I mean, they're, and in some cases, they wouldn't give the, the patients anesthesia. Like if they couldn't vocalize <laughs> that they wanted anesthesia, you know, if they were deaf or mute or some, whatever, they couldn't talk, couldn't vote, they wouldn't give them anesthesia. So they just rip all their teeth out. And so we're talking. Who doesn't want anesthesia? Exactly. <laughs> you would think that'd be standard. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, no, no. What do they care? They don't even, can't even talk. So oh, like, my gosh. So we're talking about this. And I'm like, yeah, who wouldn't want anesthesia? And then you hear a voice that says, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's kind of like agreeing with me, but like, yeah, who wouldn't, you know, agree, yeah. who wouldn't want anesthesia? The the most best EVP I got there is like literally a conversation between two people. We're the, in this one area, um, kind of the hospital area of um, Eastern State, um, Eastern State, P Penhurst. I always get those. Wait, so are we talking about Penhurst? Penhurst. Oh, sorry. you were talking about Penhurst. Damn, I did. I, did you said just, Eastern State I did, before. I, missed, I did. I, I'm sorry. So we, we're not talking about I Eastern know. State at all. I always do that. I always oh. mix up the, the two. But I did get EVPs at Eastern State too, if you want to talk about those two. <laughs> no, I get bored by Eastern State. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Penhurst is a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, we're but talking about Penhurst? I, yeah, Penhurst. Yeah, I'm gotcha. sorry. Gotcha. Now we're on I know, something. dude. I, do, I always do that. I, I've done it in my videos. I was I'm touched like, at Penhurst. Yeah. Oh, were you yes. really? Yes. Uh, where? I, uh, it was during the day. I was at. Uh, I was a vendor at Pe a Paracon. Yeah, I remember when you were over there. Yeah, and I was. That's why I was. Like, I was oh. in the Mayflower. I think it was. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. my son, me, my son, and my wife were there. It was during the day. We're just walking around, and um, I wasn't spooked out at all. There was no spookies, but I, I picked my son up, and I, I just as I picked him up and I, I tuck him into my body, I feel something brush my leg. And uh, I, I look around and there's nobody there except for me and Lindsay and, hmm. and Benny. And uh, the only thing I can think of that might have been the case is that maybe because it's so dirty in those buildings, maybe some dirt came off his shoe and brushed my leg. Sure. But I mean, other than that, I was like, well, that's weird, you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know. But that's yeah. crazy. I, I, and all right. So I, let me rewind here. I never did a night investigation at, at which I'm call it, at, Penhurst. At, uh, Penhurst. Uh, or not Penhurst, uh, Eastern State. I, I was wrong on that. Uh, and I never did one at Penhurst either. I, oh, okay. They, they were doing night investigations there when I was doing the vendor. I lived 15 minutes from there. I lived in Spring City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, or I, I used to live in Spring City, but I lived in Pottstown. So uh, I just went home and I didn't feel like going. Yeah, you know, I, I was tired. Well, dude, after a long day like that. Yeah, it, like, yeah. it was like 90 something degrees, humid. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I don't want to go you. home and eat ice pops. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Yeah, but I did catch... EVPs wow. at um which we'll call it. So apparently they don't let you ghost hunt there, I guess, or whatever. So I did it like very discreetly. Mm -hmm. So I bought a ticket, just walked around. Had they don't? My, well, they do, but they want you to pay for it. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. So, so you know what I mean? You're not about that life. Uh-huh. No, no, no. <laughs> so I, I did it discreetly. I had my iPad going and, you know, just kind of and then when I got to an area where there wasn't a lot of people, that's when I'd ask questions and stuff like that. Yeah. So I did get a couple EVPs there. One of them, um, asking questions like, what is your sentence? How long are you in for? And I get like a voice of a man that says, what do you want with me? Or what do you want from me? Something like that. Mm. Yeah. So I got that. And then um, I got a couple names there too. So I, I clicked three or four EVPs there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You went to Penhurst uh, after I moved away. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I remember yep. I'm like, dang it, Phil. Like, I know. I would have gone hung with you I on know, that one. I know. You know. It's just always timing. You know, it's yeah. just the timing is just off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy, um, Colin from uh, Paranormal Files on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever come across his I don't channel. I think so. He's got like 600,000 people following him. Good for him. Uh, but he's not one of the guys that does the fake stuff. Like, gotcha. So yeah. I watch the guys that do the fake stuff because I think it's so entertaining. Like, like I just like it, you know? Yeah. I know, that, I know. You know, here's how I know it's fake. One episode of theirs would be enough for me to have a home run episode. Like just one show. Yeah. And they have, every time they put a, a video out, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know it's manufactured. Yeah. But Gosh, it's entertaining, you know, yeah. and, and, and yeah. so I watch it, you know, but Colin uh, does real investigative stuff and uh, he has a huge following because he gets a lot of stuff and he went into to Penhurst and I think he said to me that that was one of the most terrifying experiences he's had. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They went down the tunnels and I think they paid for because they did the, mm -hmm. they actually did investigation stuff. Yeah. But um, Penhurst is another animal, man. Oh, absolutely. That's it's where wild. we, in the tunnels is where we got the full body apparition. Really? Yeah. Tell me about it. So we were down in there. 
<clears throat> and then, like I said, when when you first go there and they split you up in different groups and you investigate, we literally started there. So there hadn't been any other groups in there. I know there's not a person down there. So they we're literally in the beginning of in the middle of the tunnel, and um, there she, there's been, uh, like a guide with you, and she basically will when you get to a new area, she'll be like, "All right, this is what this place is called. These are the claims here. This is what people said have happened." You know, just mm-hmm. to kind of give you an idea of what's going on there. Yeah. So you, when you go and do your little investigation, you can maybe ask those pointing questions and stuff so as she's explaining you know that this is the tunnel there's a male down here blah 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 um this girl next to me all right yeah she's like near me she's like um i i see a man standing down there and um she's like what behind me and so like they flash the light and um yeah and so behind this like piece of plastic you can see the silhouette of a man um it looks like he's got like one i think if i remember correctly he's got like one hand up um it's on my instagram it's like the the one i've pinned on my instagram for those who want to check it out um but yeah we literally caught that um right then and there and there was no one there behind us because we literally it's a group of us there standing there so there's no one that's possibly this could be you know what i mean there's no one physically there and we i get it on camera and um within a a few moments it just he just kind of like disappears that's wild yeah um and like i said the girl saw with her own eyes then my sister kind of saw it and then i'm like and then and then I look at the footage and there he is. So that's on the YouTube channel? Yep, that's on the YouTube People channel. People got to check it out. Yeah, no, that's uh, a wild one. I, I'm, I'm going to post links to your YouTube channel. If you have any videos you specifically think that would be good for people to check out, just send it to me and I'll add that to the sure. list. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you like my top, what yeah. I think are my top ones. Have you done like a video of like top 10 things I've... Yes, this past year I did. I did two top 10s. I really? did a top 10 Randonautica moments and then a top 10... Bridgewater Triangle moments. Cool. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll add those two along with your YouTube channel. Perfect. Yeah. Get people started. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a good way to like get, you know, get, yeah. get exposed or kind of get used to like the way I do my channels and some of the ed- evidence I've caught so far. So I, I really think people are going to enjoy it, dig it, check it out. Uh, with Penhurst, it, it really, it's interesting because I think there's a lot of people who are seeing this shadow figure down the tunnels mm-hmm. and it just makes me wonder if, is it, the same thing people are seeing or is it just that much activity going on down there right um but i i I think it's always from a distance like it's never up close and personal yeah but uh now that you said that story i do remember watching colin's video and i'm pretty sure it left him running uh or somebody running and closing a door i forget what it was but it, it was pretty wild and so uh that place has a lot of crazy stuff in it and oh yeah yeah i i'm Maybe one of these days, if I ever go back to Pennsylvania, which probably isn't happening anytime yeah. soon, <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to check it out and go in there and do something. But um, yeah, I don't have any plans to go back unless I'm moving another family member to Tennessee. So. Yeah, there you go. But um, I don't blame you. So uh, we talked about Huckamuck Swamp, mm-hmm. uh, Bridgewater Triangle, uh, Penhurst. Uh, what are some of the other places that that you have been hitting that you kind of like that stand out to you? Well, recently, um, I'll I got a couple more, but let's see. I'll do this one first. It's called the Witching Tree. Okay. And so this is one of those ones where I honestly, going into it, wasn't thinking much because there. It's one of those urban legends <clears throat> where there's not a lot of information, literally not like hardly any information about it. I found one little teeny article about it on some blog. I mean, like, so basically, the history of this very limited history. I don't even know if it's true or not, but the limited history is that. This is a place where people would get lynched, people get hung, witches got hung here, stuff like that. So it's a place where capital punishment took place, yeah. allegedly. So I go there. I'm like, I'm not even thinking much. So I'm like, okay, you know, like maybe this, it'll be a cool video regardless, you know, if I yeah. catch anything or not, just because it's a, it's a cool concept, witching tree, you know, it's like, you know. so I go there doing my thing. Um, I get to the backside of the tree, <clears throat> ask, doing the spirit box thing, asking questions, and then... I think the first thing that kind of happens is I hear a voice and it's, it, I, as I listened back to it, I couldn't, it was nothing you could make out that like a, like a words or anything, but you could hear a voice and I heard it with my own ears at the time. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. So then I started asking more questions, you know? Um, and so right, right in between a spirit box session and the end of a per- spirit box session and the next spirit box session, I don't hear it with my own ears, but I hear a female's voice like humming like a singing a tune like really mm -hmm, mm -hmm, wow mm -hmm, kind of like that and so after that happens then i get another evp of what i'm assuming is the same woman 
speaking to me, saying something to me, but I, I feel like it's Native American because I, I just can't make it out. I, it doesn't sound like anything English. It, it's just, she's obviously speaking, but I can't understand what she's saying. So I, I catch that, those EVPs. And then on the spirit box, which I think is the most um, interesting thing of, of, of the video, prior to that video, the video before, I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, I had been praying to God to be like, oh, you know, help me with my YouTube channel. Help me like shine you through my YouTube channel, however that may be. Mm. So I'll, I'll back, I'll say that to say this in the Huckenbuck the week before, unprovoked in the spirit box as I'm just asking normal questions on the, uh, one of the responses is pray, please pray for me at the Huckamuck. So I, I was like, wow, that's incredible. So I did, I prayed for that person. So with that in mind at the witching tree, I was like, let me ask the same question. You know, maybe if there's ghosts here, maybe they need me to pray for them. If not, if it's some sort of evil entity, I'll get a response out of them too. So that's what I was thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. So I asked the same question. I was like, is there anyone here that wishes me to pray for them? Please say pray. So there's a man's voice first that says, yeah, okay. And then there's a woman's voice that says, yes, please. And then there's a woman that just comes out of nowhere, kind of interrupts them all. And it's like, what are you doing? He's the enemy. And I was like, so my mind's going like a million different directions. So I'm like, okay, uh, is this a Native American? Maybe, maybe they think I'm an enemy because I'm an English person. Yeah. I was like, that's probably the best way I could look at it. The worst way I could look at it is like, yeah. this is an evil entity that's like, oh no, no, this is, don't be accepting prayer from this person. You know what I mean? This is person. He like, plays for the wrong team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, whoa, yikes. I, that was, I, it was something I didn't expect wow. at all. So. And was that with your ears or? Um, that was on the spirit box. On the spirit. So mm -hmm. you got that on recording? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. people check out this YouTube yeah, channel. That was on the it's funny because it, 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 like, I know what you're doing and I try to, I try to share your stuff when I, no, when and I, I appreciate it. you've been such a big help for sure. Such I, a big help. But like you and I were talking before we started recording about how now that you're a YouTuber, you don't have time to watch YouTube stuff. And, I, and, and I, I totally identify with that because I don't have time to listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, yeah. unless it's for what I need to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Unfortunately, it, I wish I could. Yeah. I wish I had the time. But. I was so glad you said that to me because I was like, finally, somebody can understand where I'm coming from. Because I feel bad. Like, people, Dude, me people too. Like, hey, have you checked this podcast? I'm like, absolutely not. Check it out. Probably won't. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. got an hour to to listen to an episode. Yeah. I just don't. Like, right. like, the best thing people can do is to say, hey, at timestamp here to here. That's the part yep. that check you want to check. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's just like if you just send me a link to a podcast and I see it's an hour or two hours, I'm like, sorry, I, I don't. I'm not even going to attempt. Yeah, I don't have drive time, and I'm every time you know it's, it is what it is. But mm -hmm. uh, so you have that on video recorded. Yeah, yeah. that's freaking awesome. Yeah, dude. no, it was unreal. Wow. I couldn't. That was shocking. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And what's interesting about that place? Another buddy I've just became friends with. His name's Plymouth Paranormal. He went there. And he just does it for fun. He has no channel, no nothing. He really? Just goes, yeah. He just does ghost hunting for fun. So he. Why is he called Plymouth Paranormal? Where is he? I think I think it's just where he's from, Plymouth. The town. Was he have a YouTube channel or a no. Facebook page? Facebook page. He just has Instagram. Oh, so that's he calls himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On Instagram. Okay, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. That's that, that's how okay. I know him. Gotcha. And so um he you know he had saw my video and so he's like oh where is this where is this so I was like hey yeah here it is go check it out yeah. When he get there, <laughs> you get an EVP of a ghost telling him "f you." <laughs> what really? Yeah. Wow! I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "Damn!" I didn't think there was anything like that there, but I was like, "Wow!" I mean, you said you're the enemy, so yeah, I mean, so, it, it yeah. Is aggressive nature. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Wow. Yeah, but I was kind of taken back by that. Cause yeah. I was like, whoa! I was like, whoa! I was like, yeah. damn! I was like, I thought you were a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It, it's it, it's interesting. Uh, I think what's interesting about this witching tree is that. Um, it, 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 which, which you said earlier when you first started introducing the idea of the witching tree, I find uh, very useful for people maybe getting into this kind of stuff. Uh, and it's something that I do. Uh, I, I plan on doing more investigative type stuff uh, on video for the YouTube channel, not for my films. Yep. Uh, this is where me and Jack go out with uh, actually the two cameras we're using right now mm -hmm. in studio and we go film stuff. We connected with a, a YouTuber here in Knoxville. He does it full time. Awesome. And he's gotten some incredible evidence of monsters out in the woods. Uh, he actually sent me some audio this past weekend said, I can't share it right now, but it is straight up a uh, very clear howl. Really? Uh, I, love it, I, I mean, it, 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 it's classic. Um, but uh, one thing that I did in Pennsylvania, like I, I talk a lot about the uh, the prisoner of war camp and the video yeah, that yeah, I put yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, mm yeah. -hmm. 
the reason why we went there is one, it's prisoner of war camp, strong chance of it being haunted, right? But it was a physical location we could go to that has an interesting story. Yeah. Yes, there's Bigfoot in those forests. There's Dogman. It's a haunted forest. There's the Nazis that died there, all that stuff, right? But if it's a complete dud of a trip, at least we can bring them a cool video where it's yeah. like, look at these ruins, you know? So like yeah, you went right. to the witching tree and you can talk about what happened there and, and all the legends behind yes, it, whether absolutely. you get stuff or not. Yep. And that's, I think, just a little uh, a nugget for people maybe looking to get into this kind of stuff. And how do you do it? Put the odds in your favor. Put paranormal aside, like find find uh, the 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 location that might have paranormal activity but what's interesting about that outside the paranormal bring that to the audience because you know you can yeah and if you yeah. get other stuff awesome it's just bonus they it's can just extra you can yeah. take them on the journey to a, on a paranormal investigation to a l location that the location itself is interesting and then if you get activity it's even better. Yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, and that, that way you don't feel like you're wasting your time because I think there's a lot of hesitation people have where they're like, man, yeah, I want to go, but I'm not guaranteed to get anything. And then I just wasted my weekend. I got to be at work on Monday and all that stuff, you know? Uh, and so maybe that would help people. Um, and that's just some free advice from Tony. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think that's just stinking thinking because even if you don't catch something, that's, that's great too. Because you'd be like, oh, you know what? This place isn't haunted. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then you could, that could be the title of your video. This, you know, whatever the name of the place is, is not haunted. Debunked. Yeah. And people will click on <laughs> yeah. that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that's just stinking thinking. You, you should, what is that? Stinking? Yeah. Stinking is thinking. That like, yeah. It's a saying. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that. Really? Oh yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, I mean like you could go and uh, do, you know, the Sally house debunked right yeah people that would, people would click that they, yeah. like if you oh, did, yeah. if you did a debunk video on the sally house or something like mm -hmm. that yeah they, they'd click that like you're a liar yeah prove it yeah debunked right yeah <laughs> you know i love it but uh exactly. so the witching tree now i know you said you had a couple other things you wanted to share what are those things i got uh anawan rock um for those of you don't probably have no idea what anawan rock is i'll give you a, a bl brief history of Anawan Rock. So Anawan Rock is very important in New England history. Um, in the early part of New England history, when the pilgrims arrived, um, they were here for like 40 years. So we're, the year about 1675 is when this war breaks out between the Native Americans and the pilgrims mm. in the area. There's a lot of history that goes into why that war happened, but basically, I won't get into all those details, but basically, it's the end of the war. The English are winning. Um, King Philip, the leader of the Wampanoags, is now dead. A lot of his leaders are now dead. They're kind of hunting down the last few um, important people just to kind of capture them. And, you know, so that way there's not another insurrection or, you know, the yeah. war continues on because this is the bloodiest battle um, up until this point in American history. Jeez. You know, a lot of English people died. A lot of Native Americans died. A lot of bloodshed uh, are on these lands of Massachusetts mm -hmm. in the Bridgewater Triangle area and other places in Massachusetts, too. Which might be fueling some of the paranormal yeah, activity too. Yeah, I'd say so. And one of these places is Anawan Rock. So Anawan was a Native American, um, kind of like figurehead leader kind of guy, older, kind of showed the younger Native Americans how to be a warrior, that kind of thing. Sort of like more of a spiritual advisor and kind of like a mentor kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So like I said, this is the end of the war. This guy named Benjamin Church, who's pretty famous in New England. Um it was friends with Native Americans and used them to help them, the pilgrims, and uh, fight against Native Americans. So they're hunting down Anawan. They find, they figure out that he's going to be at this place. They go, they capture him. Anyway, long story short, Benjamin Church is like, I'm not going to kill you. I just want you to work for me. And then, you know, and you can help me be my advisor, blah, 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 for the end of this war. He's like, great, that's cool. He glees on a trip. The other people in Pil um, the other pilgrims take him. They bring him to Plymouth. They chop off his head, they quarter him, they put his head on a spike, which was um, what they did at the time, the English did at the time to enemies of the state um, and traitors and stuff like that. Yeah. They would, that's what they would do. More barbaric. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they would, you know, they marched their head through the street of Plymouth and stuff like that Man. and put their head on a spike at the fort in Plymouth. Oh, wild. This, you can kind of imagine that That's scene. not very politically uh, correct. That is not very politically correct. So <laughs> that's what they did. And so when Benjamin Church comes back from his trip and he sees his head in Plymouth, he's just distraught because yeah. he's like, I promised this guy that he, I wouldn't kill him and here he is dead. So that's Anawan's Rock. So that's kind of the history of it. Wow. So we go there. I've never been there before. We're we'll checking it out. We go on top of Anawan's Rock. It's basically just kind of like a, a 
I think they call them pudding stones or pound um pound stones or whatever just like a kind of like a, a rock a bigger rock not like a mountain but it's just kind of like a singular rock that you can kind of climb up on top of and you know so we're on top there we're doing evp session and um i'm like all right you want to do a spirit box and then nicole's like yeah okay and so then there's this other voice that comes out of nowhere that just goes shh like quiet and so which is interesting because this is a place where anawan was captured and at the time when he was captured they were the english were sneaking up over this rock to come capture him wow. so they wanted to be quiet so that's, you know I mean? It's kind of interesting yeah. that you get the shh, like be quiet. And so not only that, we we're getting a couple um, spirit box responses, kind of normal stuff. And all of a sudden I asked the, the classic question I always ask. I was like, if you want me to stay, please say stay. If you want me to leave, please say leave. And without skipping a beat, leave, leave, go home, please go away, go home, please wow. leave. Yeah, like over and over. Like I've never had it happened so many times where it was like just kept on saying it over and over and over please leave please leave go away please leave wow yeah 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 <laughs> would you leave yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're like well now i was like i have to leave i asked them if they wanted to, like I, I guess we have to i was like we'll leave we'll leave we'll leave <laughs> but uh, wild you should, you should have been like don't tell me how to live my life yeah. <laughs> bro i'm sticking around <laughs> another 15 the top of the hill <laughs> top of the rock hey if you catch it on video yeah absolutely so, so what do you think is going to be like i mean because you haven't gone viral yet right mm -mm. okay so like, what do you think as somebody who's out there and you're enjoying the process clearly? So yeah. it's not like it's a chore for you, but obviously you do this because you'd like to get followers and sure. grow in popularity. Yeah. Uh, and viral is one of those aspects. Uh, what do you think of all the stuff that you're creating uh, well, that you've captured and that maybe one day you would capture? Is there any thoughts in your head as to what you think would get the most attention for you? that maybe you already have that that people haven't just discovered yet or anything like that? Um, I would say it's probably going to be something I'm going to be doing in the future. It's because I don't think anyone's ever done this yet as mm -hmm. far as what I know. And I'm going to take these like King Philip War sites and these battlefields and I'm going to do videos on those places. Wow. Okay. And I'll probably do it like town by town. Like, oh, you know, for whatever, Middleborough. This is Middleborough. These are all the things that happen in Middleborough and then go to all these different sites as many as I can. Some of them I'm not going to be able to do. Some of them are on private land and stuff like that. But there is a lot of these places that are just, you know, on the side of a road or just, you know, in a park somewhere, yeah. you know. So that's kind of like my main gonna I think I'm going to try to do some of those kind of videos, kind of like history slash kind of like history coming alive kind of yeah. thing. You know, I've kind of started to do that or some urban legend type stuff I started to do where um, I did Abrams Rock, which is in, like an urban legend in Massachusetts where um, allegedly a Native American, King Philip's War again, and allegedly Native American was friendly with the people in Swansea. This is where it is in Swansea, Massachusetts. Um, and King Philip's War breaks out. King Philip does not like that this Native American is friendly with the pilgrims. He doesn't want him, him to be. So some sort of argument ensues. They capture him at his rock and um, Abrams Rock where he lives. And they're like, all right, well, this, you got two choices. We can kill you now. Or you can jump off this rock three times. If you survive the third jump, we'll let you live. And so story goes, legend goes, he jumps off once, survives, jumps off twice, survives. Third fall, he dies. So that's that was like the urban legend. So I've been doing kind of like stuff like that where it's like maybe not necessarily as well known. You know what I mean? Kind of bringing to light some old legends and stories that people maybe people have never heard of. Yeah. Because I think that's going to be an avenue where it's I huge. can get. Yeah, because it's. You know, if people search it on YouTube, I'm going to be the only video that pops up yeah. for it, you know. And I think it, it serves a value too. Oh, yeah. It's educational. It's yeah, yes. history value. It's huge. Because I, mean, as somebody who loves history and also loves this paranormal stuff, mm -hmm. that's the blending of two worlds for me. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Uh, I just had this thought and I wrote it down so I didn't forget. Um, there, there, I had a guy on my show not too long ago, Mark Steves from mm -hmm. uh, My Family Thinks I'm Crazy. And he has, within the last year or two, been mapping these megalithic sites he's been finding in New England. Oh, interesting. It might be a good idea to connect with him and either have him come with you or I know he sells a PDF of what he's been finding. Yeah. And maybe go to those locations no, and do sure. what you do at these locations. No, hell yeah. I'd see what happens. Yeah. No, yeah. hell yeah. Now, was he the one that came on, was talking about um, some of the Native American, like the giant... The giant stuff was that him? Because I did hear an it episode. Might have been. It, it, I, Is I called he from it Connecticut or something. Yeah. Okay. I called I, it Megalithic New yeah, England. Yeah. 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 I did listen to that episode. I think it's some of the things that he was bringing up are some of the things that are in kind of the 
Native American culture where I'm at. Okay. Because it um he's from like Connecticut area. It's all Algonquin. Yeah. The Gal- Algonquin tribe. But within the Algonquin tribe, there's different, you know, Wampanoag, Nipmuc. Yeah. There's a bunch of different kinds. So it's interesting to hear him describe some of the the Native American stuff because it's even a little bit different than what the Wampanoags believe. You know, it's wow. it's strange how like it's somewhat similar, but then they have their own little like spin on it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I found it very interesting. So I, I have to hook up with him. And- yeah, I'm sure he would he would uh, hook up with you and stuff. Uh, yeah. he's a he's a really good guy, uh, and you know it'd be you guys probably would have a really good conversation on his podcast too. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, for sure. I'll see if I can hook it up. But uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, how you were praying to God and that like do you do you feel like there's a God mission here for you when it comes to being a paranormal investigator? I honestly I've been thinking more and more. Yes. Now, the reason why I say that is because I, but in the past year, I've been going, I started to go back to church again mm. and I'm, you know, my faith is like renewed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's definitely an empty hole as far as paranormal and Christianity there. Cause for, you know, I was growing up, a yeah. lot of people would be like, okay, well, you can't, you shouldn't ghost hunt. You shouldn't, the, everything's a demon, you know, all that yeah. kind of like old school mentality of like, you know, not messing with the paranormal at all. Yeah. Whereas like, I don't think the Bible necessarily says that you shouldn't mess with the paranormal at all. You know, um, as far as like, yes, you shouldn't do witchcraft. Yes, you shouldn't um, talk to ghosts to try to get uh, life advice about the future and stuff like that. You should go to God for that. And I think that's what the Bible is very clear on. But I don't think the Bible says anything about, you know, doing an EVP session. I don't think that's mm. witch, witchcraft in my opinion. Okay. Um, you know, some people may uh, out there may think like that, like, yeah. you know, some of the old school kind of like Christian, Christian people. I don't think like that. And I've, you know, I've been praying and, and to ask God to bless my channel and like have him come through. And I said that prayer. And then the next week immediately I get to pray, you know? So yeah. I think that's God's way of saying, yeah, there is something here that I can shine through. Um, I've just haven't exactly figured out what that is yet. You know, whether that's being like a Christian paranormal investigator and being more like open about that on my channel, you know, and yeah. kind of like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm still trying to like figure that yeah, out. Yeah, I, I would, I, it just from my, my own opinion, I feel like uh, I wouldn't try assuming a character and yeah. just let you be you on for the public. And that's yeah. kind of just how I've done. No, myself. yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and if, if your if your walk with God is starting to strength right now, let that be what it is. And if it comes up in conversation while you're talking a video, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, people sniff out fake, phony stuff. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? They, oh, they, yeah. they know when somebody is trying to push an agenda and stuff. And I get accused of trying to push my faith on people. Listen, I'm just being me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't. I really don't care. Uh, I like I, in all honesty, like with the way I believe when it comes to like heaven and my salvation and all that stuff, like your salvation none of my business mm-hmm. like it just isn't you yeah. know i'm not I'd like like i would love to see people you know come to faith in christ because i know how amazing it was for me but at the end of the day i don't really like like yeah. it's not, i don't want to say i don't care because it's, that sounds mean but it's like that's between you and god like it's not my business yeah. you know what i mean it's like one of those things where you can't save somebody you have you can lead the horse to the water you can't make them drink yeah, exactly. so at the end of the day like it's out of my hands i ain't sweating you know what i mean so like I just, I just am who I am on my show, and because my what I do is talking, it comes through maybe a lot more than maybe somebody who does investigative work. But just be you, and just let it just unfold. However, God, because God's going to will it. Like yeah. God, God will let it unfold. You know, yeah, so, absolutely. I think it's really cool, though. I mean, uh, I went through a stage uh, on this show actually. Uh, I when I started the podcast, I had started really coming to this like. Um, shift in my own life where I was like, the Christian church is this, that, and the other, American church, blah, and I'm angry. And I wound up leaving the church I was going to, and it took me a while to get to another church. And, you know, uh, when I got to that church, I was being hypercritical and, you know, uh, you know, just real grumpy about everything. And it wasn't until recently uh, that I was, because I, I, I started going to church and, and, and I found a church to, that I liked up there. And then I, we, we go to church down here and we like the church we're at now and all that. But um, I, I, I would still have this grumpy mindset. And I, I would say, you know, things like, you know, the, the American church, the, it's all corporate and, you know, they, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Just kind of downing yeah, it. Yeah. And I, I do feel that way. But it's funny. My producer, Joseph, um, for some of these films, and he works for Miracle Media, he said to me, uh, he said, well, I, I got saved in one of those churches. 
And then I, it made me pause and I was like, yeah, me too. You know? yeah, <laughs> and, right. and all of a sudden it just was like, they serve a purpose. Yeah. You know, it may not be my, it, it may not be good for me, you know, and maybe I outgrew the church kind of thing, yeah. but uh, they, they definitely serve a purpose. Oh, absolutely. And, and so I kind of like, I kind of been re- backtracking on that and admitting where my, I was wrong on that sure. stuff. Sure. Uh, and I don't know how I got on this. Let's get back to no, parenting stuff. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it's interesting to hear you talk about that stuff and and how you know your view on your faith is playing into the channel because mm-hmm. it, it is weird. Yeah. But, but the, at the let me, let me kind of circle it back around with this. Uh, we are living in a supernatural existence that is void of acknowledgement from the American Christian Church. Oh yeah. And that is a problem that I'll I'll always have until they change it. Yeah. And people like you and I step out out of line and we pursue the supernatural in our own ways. And that gets a lot of criticism from mm-hmm. the masses, you oh, know, for sure. now over the last, I'd say six years that I've experienced doing podcasting, I've been seeing a lot of those, what I would call the masses kind of w- swerving back into my lane a little bit. They're dipping their toes. They're like, mm, you might be onto something here. And mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. believe in all this, but yeah, this yeah. over here, yep. And uh, I, I think we do serve a purpose. And it's because there is this God that everybody says they believe in that's a supernatural God who brought all this into existence supernaturally. And that supernaturalism has never left. Yeah. We just left the theology of it. And so we're kind of we're kind of bringing it back to the old school. Yeah, you know? that's true. And so that's how I view it. Uh, and I just host conversation with interesting people, you know, yeah. like, like, over the years, I've had so many different types of people on the show, mm-hmm. you know, and there's been at least five Satanists on this show that people had no idea were Satanists because it just was not pertinent to the conversation. Right. We, they, we brought them on for their experiences. They shared it. They didn't try pushing their anything. Nobody knows. Yeah. Because it's just, it is what it is. Right. And, and I think three or four of them, yeah, only one of them I knew going into it. Oh, really? Yeah. I had no idea. Interesting. Uh, and it was just like one of those things where it's like, I didn't feel any conviction about it. I was just like, they shared their experience and this is what God told me to do. Like, like uh, before I was a podcaster, I felt God tell me that he put me in this community to affect change. Well, that's not affect change for people who aren't saying this. That's not, effect, you know, or witches, yeah, you know? Right, right. Like, like Joel, the one guy, not from Van Tessa, but there's another guy, Joel, that was on the podcast. Um, I forget what we called it, but it was a fantastic show. And he was a witch. Like, wow. like, like, let's put it this way. Before we started the interview, I asked him, I said, you know, I'm a Christian, right? And he's like, yeah. And I said, we're not going to have any problems, right? And he's like, no, Tony, I love you, man. I was like, okay, I just want to make sure because you were probably- <laughs> I've been through this before. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been through this. But he was- <laughs> That's so funny you said that. Oh, it's funny. No, but like, I, I was thinking like, you know, he was- because I've talked to pagans before and yeah, I've talked to people yeah. in the new age and all that stuff, right? People who do alternate things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was the one that I was, I've, I've, he was the only one I've, I was ever nervous to talk to because of what I knew about him going into it. Like he, like Joel is a nice guy to me. He's not a nice guy to everybody. Yeah. Right. And and I was like, whew, this dude's for real, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so it's just been, it's been an interesting journey. And 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 when you brought that up, it just kind of got my wheels turning and stuff. So the last 15 minutes, if people didn't like it, it is what it is, yeah. you know? Yeah. But uh, before I, I, I go too far off the deep end, uh, where, I, I did, was there anywhere else you wanted to cover? I, I know you've covered a lot of different things. Um, I mean, I could talk all day about I know. my videos. I know. So <laughs> it depends how much more you want to hear. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I'm fine with it. Uh, I think that the Bridgewater Triangle, Huckamuck Swamp, is fascinating. Mm-hmm. And I think you're making a, a, a really good move focusing in on that area and then branching out into more educational areas as well, like the historical side of things. Uh, if you can connect with, with Mark and start hitting some of these megalithic spots up, it'd be fascinating. Because I don't think he's done paranormal stuff right, there. Right, you're just kind of cataloging the... The you know the yeah. structures themselves like, like he's showing pictures of them and things gotcha. like that and they, they're apparently they're they're more frequent than people realize. Hmm. Uh, it'd be fascinating to see what you uncover while being at yeah, these spots. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't think he's done the paranormal. No, so. I, I, I highly doubt anybody has. Yeah, you know what I mean. So we'd probably be the first people to do it. Fascinating. I think is interesting. The so I I 
I think Tennessee is the best place to live ever. Yeah. But I think the history where you're at is a treasure trove mm-hmm. for you. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, it, sure. you're never going to run out of places to visit. No, nope, not at all. I mean, I've just been doing like early New England history stuff. I haven't even got into like Revolutionary War stuff. It's wild. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. in like the 1600s. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Let alone like, you know, the other stuff that yeah. happened after, which yeah. is a lot of history itself. You Tons. know, so Yeah, dude. Do endless. Do you do you hear stories up there from being there? I know you may not, but like, um, you remember the 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 movie uh, Nicholas Cage? Uh, what was that movie called? Um, uh, Jack, uh, do you remember the name of the movie? Ghost Rider. Not Ghost Rider. The one where he's like in Philadelphia. Uh, National Treasure. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. National yeah, yeah, Treasure. Yeah. Good one. So like in National Treasure, he. He's you know running around doing all this treasure hunting stuff in cities and yeah. you know, covering these secret lost spots in cities. Have you heard of anything like that up in your area? And like lost cities? Not lost cities, but just like you know secret. Like, is there any legends of like you know three hundred years ago this organization supposedly hid this in the city of Boston and mm. you know nobody's ever found it? Have you ever come across anything like that? Anything like gold? De- now there's a couple. There's one I don't know the name of the the guy. But I think it's up in Gloucester. There was a pirate gold story like that where this guy allegedly had pirate gold and he buried it in this tomb or underneath a rock. And yeah. many people have tried to go in there and like try to find it and they can't find it. You know, that there's that story. There's another one as far as like, I'm trying to think like treasure stuff. Um, there's a, a story going back to like King Philip's war. King Philip had this belt that was called the wampum belt. Now, wampum is like, mm, I'm trying to describe it the best way I can. I think it's like, it's like pieces of like stone or shells or something made to look like they're like different colors and stuff. And so they'd make this elaborate belts out of them with like, they would either tell the story of their people, like different events, you know, like huge, you know, probably six feet long or something. And then they also had, he also had this like star sort of necklace thing. So that has been lost since... 1677 really? or something here yeah wow. in, Mass- in massachusetts somewhere um so allegedly the story goes allegedly anawan that we were talking about before had it and he gave it to allegedly gave it to benjamin church but that's kind of where it disappears from wow. there no one knows what happened after it was a, supposed to originally supposed to go to the king of england for um so sort of like you know just because they won the war and they were like oh we're going to send you all these you know, we'll say they send them cranberries and stuff from Massachusetts and all these other things because they won yeah. the war. It kind of celebratory, and the wampum belt and that other stuff was supposed to be in there, but it never made it. Mm. So no one wow. knows what happened to it. Whether Benjamin Church had it or someone else had it, it's just gone and lost forever. No one knows what happened to it. Ooh. So when you said with wampum, wampum belt, yeah, wampum belt. I, I just started thinking about that guy. I, see, I don't. I'm not good with movies. That glove. The 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 glove. The Marvel glove guy. Oh Thanos. yeah, yeah, Thanos. Thanos, yes. <laughs> uh, like, like uh, that's what I started thinking. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, tell me more. Yeah, tell me yeah. how this is gonna destroy you. Yeah, but th- that's interesting too. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, a, yeah, it's like um, treasure. You yeah, know? It's, yeah, it is like a treasure. It's, it's amazing, so, actually. Yeah. I I wonder if it's still intact. Like, imagine if it's lost. Lo- you know what I mean? But yeah. you said it was made out of stones and stuff. Stone and like leather. Okay, so probably yeah, leather it backed. Be. Yeah, with I mean, stones. It can very well be around yeah, still. For sure. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Would it be cool if like it was hidden somewhere like in like the deep tunnel system underneath the city or something like that? Yeah. That, that would be so cool. Like you hear about these old cities like the East Coast cities yep. like Philly and, and Boston. Mm-hmm. Dude, like I there's got to be some kind of like basement somewhere where you knock in a wall and there's a whole other room that goes down a steps staircase and all of a sudden opens up into this forgotten section oh, of the city. for sure. Boston's like that for sure. I mean, <sighs> half of Boston is was literally water mm. that they filled in with like huge wood pylons. and yeah, Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boston, origi- the original Boston is like small. It was like really? A, yeah, it was like an inlet with like, um, you know, land and then marsh all the way around it kind of thing. Wow. And they back in those days, they didn't really care. So they're like, all right, we're just going to fill this in. So... <laughs> That's what they did. They filled it in. Like they literally put like huge trees down into the the swamp or the marsh and then filled it in with like soil and land and up top. Wow. Yeah. So Boston, original Boston is like small. So if you and ever buried. go to Boston, yeah. If you ever go to Boston, yeah, it is buried. Yep. If you ever go to Boston, I could show you like the original Boston and then it's amazing how much of it is was added on later. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. I- it's just 
I love this stuff, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we 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 started out talking about the Huckamuck Swamp and the paranormal, yeah. <laughs> and now we're still talking about the same area, just a different aspect yeah. of it. It's oh yeah, just, it's it, dude, endless. There's endless things in Massachusetts and New England in general. You know, you're never leaving, are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been there ever as long as I've known you. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I lived in Pennsylvania for a few years. That's true. You that's know? true. But yeah. um, other than that, yeah, yeah, primarily. I mean. I'm always open to like move somewhere else and stuff yeah. like I never want to be one of those people that's like, oh, I'm not going to do this, not going to do that. Yeah. You know, because you end up doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So I was like, I I'll just, you. you know, I'll leave. I'm always open to whatever, wherever life takes me, I'll go. Yeah. You know, man. Well, before we get out of here, uh, tell people again, YouTube channel where they can yeah, find Yeah. Uh, Canadian media. Dutch Boy Studios is where you can find. I do weekly YouTube videos every single Thursday, 7 p.m. Um, obviously, you can find all my backlog videos on there as well. I have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. What else? Is that it? That's oh, Twitter. Twitter. Exploring with Phil. Uh, Phil with two L's. Uh -huh. um, I think the only one that's not exploring with Phil is Twitter because it's too many characters. So I think it's like exploring <laughs> underscore Phil. I don't know. Something like that. Gotcha. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And and the I know on Instagram, the picture uh, Garrett Hoover designed. Yes, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've had that logo, which seems forever now. It's been it's a, a cool logo, man. Oh, hell yeah. He did a great job. Yeah. No, shout out to him. Yeah. If anyone ever needs logos done or whatever, he's a great dude. He Garrett can, Hoover. Yeah. I follow him on Instagram, so yeah, you can me too. for my follows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he likes my posts every once in a while. So yeah. I'm like, oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. um, well, I got, a, I got a stalker. And so oh, no way. I got to go handle some things with the police today. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I wasn't planning on that. But uh, yeah, it turns out <laughs> I got a stalker and I got to go uh, take care of it because oh. apparently my stalker uh, isn't leaving. Oh, yeah. And, that's cool. And it's it's my first stalker. But my so wife. It's kind of like an achievement in a way. Yeah, like, yeah. It's kind of like, like, oh, like I'm kind of upset about this, but I'm kind of not about upset about this. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I arrived, I guess. You yeah, know? that right. But, yeah, that's how you know you've arrived. But. Yeah, I, I like. Ay, ay, ay. I'll, I'll tell you the whole story. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I love like, it. Like, literally, right now, my stalker is here. What? And, uh, ay, ay, and ay, ay. It, it's, it's, it's borderline criminal. Oh, it's definitely well. It's not criminal, yet, necessarily, but yeah. it, it's getting to the point where it's like it's getting. Shady. They're they're visiting places asking for me, gotcha. and uh, people are contacting me saying, "Hey, you know," and we my I I'm not as worried as my wife is. She's worried sure. that somebody's gonna f finally show up at the house, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I live in Tennessee for a reason, friends. That's right. So just remember <laughs> that <laughs> I've been dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Very on both. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta go take care of it at the police. But it was great having you. No, dude, it was incredible. Thank you again. I appreciate everything you do for me, sharing my posts. Yeah, Ever since the beginning, you've been helping me out. So I love it, man. I appreciate it. People, check them out. Maybe I'm forgotten at the bottom where it's hollow.
leader, but it's on the foot. You start in the darkness, it's just premature. My talents go deeper than Abraham. I scratch up from source from the cherubim. Lies on me like wings from a seraphim.